Before turning on the printer, ensure that the toner cartridge is inserted correctly. Before turning on the printer, make sure the power cable is connected. Also, a USB cable. If your printer is connected via LPT port, make sure you have connected it correctly. To print over network, connect the network cable to the printer. Check the power button. It should be in good condition and not have signs of damage. Turn on the printer. After turning it on, the display should light up and the counting of the amount of RAM should begin. Wait for the inscription ready. If you see this inscription, then the printer is ready to work. To do a cold reset at the beginning of the RAM count, hold down the OK button as shown in the video. Press on it until the RAM count ends. Use the up and down arrows to select cold reset from the list. Check whether the rollers in the tray are correct. If the paper is not being picked up from tray number one, check the roller. The roller should be sufficiently sharp to grip the paper. It is necessary to replace the upper roller. Only use new rollers. This is how the roller looks after replacement. If these rollers are in bad condition, it will cause the printing to jam. Replace the rollers with new ones if necessary. Be careful, the roller should fall into place. The roller should fall into place fairly easily. Put in the new roller and make sure it turns. Remove the side panel and gain access to the formatter. Unscrew the two bolts and carefully remove it using a screwdriver, ensuring not to damage the ribbon cable. Gently pull it out with a little effort. Remove the rear door, pull out the left latch by pressing it with your finger as shown in the video. To remove the fuser, pry it off by the blue hooks on the bottom and carefully pull it out. not forget to pull out the toner. Unscrew the four screws to remove the top cover. Open the front door and remove it by pressing it with your fingers as you see in the video. Carefully pull this part out of the loops starting from the left side. If the paper is not being picked up from train number one, check the roller. The roller should be sufficiently sharp to grip the paper. It is necessary to replace the upper roller. This is what the roller looks like up close. Only use new rollers. This is how the roller looks after replacement. Also, the separator under the roller needs to be replaced. To remove this, you will need to press it with your fingers as shown in the video and pry it with a screwdriver. This is what a new separator should look like. Insert the rubber back in as shown in the video. Unscrew the three screws to remove this.
Do not forget to remove the side cable, which is responsible for printing from tray number one. This panel is held on by six screws. Unscrew them all. Remove and inspect the rollers located at the bottom of the printer. The reason why the printer cannot print or pick up paper may be due to the issues with the rollers located in the lower part of the printer above tray 2. The only solution to address this issue is to replace the rollers. Compare how the new and the old rollers look. The old rollers are unable to grip the paper properly because they have become too smooth and have lost grip. Check the PS2 sensor to see if it's stuck. The PS2 sensor should not stick. Remove this hook before working on the solenoid. Unscrew the screen carefully. Use a pick to pull out the solenoid. Check the solenoid to see if it sticks. If it sticks, the sticky surface needs to be replaced. Disassemble the solenoid parts. Carefully remove the upper part without damaging the spring. Scrape off the faulty material layer using a knife, taking care not to harm yourself. Clean any remaining material residue with a cloth and alcohol. The surface should be grease free for better adhesion of the new material. Apply the new material. Once it's securely attached, reassemble the solenoid as shown in the video. Make sure to test the solenoid again before securing it back in the printer. Gently insert the solenoid into its original position, ensuring it fits precisely into the slot. Put the solenoid back in. The lower solenoid is responsible for printing from tray number 2. If you experience printing issues from tray number 2, one possible problem is the solenoid responsible for that tray. Test the other solenoids in the exact same way. Test the solenoid for any sticking issues. The upper solenoid handles printing from tray number one. Signs of a malfunctioning solenoid include jamming or the tray picking up multiple sheets of paper simultaneously. Remove the material layer using a knife, being careful not to harm yourself, and apply a new one. Ensure that the surfaces are well cleaned from the glue residue and previous material, using alcohol for cleaning. Reconnect the solenoid as shown in the video. To remove the laser guard, start on the left side. Bend the left side and pull it out to the right as shown in the video. Make sure you remove the spring as well. Unscrew the black gear.
This gear needs to be replaced. It is very worn out. Here are the new and old gears. Replace the gears with new ones. Use lubricant to help reduce wear on the gears. Check the swing play gears. They should not be too worn out. If necessary, replace the swing play. To see, check the next video. This is what a normal gear should look like. Replace or clean the gears on the fuser. Install the new gear and apply lubri lubricant as shown in the video. Gears need cleaning or replacement. Install the front. Hook the spring on the right side and carefully insert the left side into the groove. Make sure all parts fit together nicely. Put on the left side, hook the hooks at the bottom and lean the top of the side. Carefully lean the front of the side as shown in the video. Make sure all moving parts are clean and free from sticking.
Remember to connect the cable, otherwise the display will not function. Make sure the cover fits snugly on the printer and there are no gaps. Position the tailgate starting on the right side and make sure all pieces are in the right places. Attach the right side starting from the bottom. Make sure everything is correct. On this side are all special hooks that should match the holes on the bottom of the printer. Make sure to check if the power button works properly after connecting. The top cover uses four bolts to be screwed down. This video is suitable for repairing HP 4200s, HP 4240, HP 4250, and HP 4350 printers.